Hey folks, Dr. Mike here from Renaissance Periodization and I have three squat tips for you to potentially instantly improve your squat by a mile. How did I learn about these three tips? Well, Jared Feather, IFBB Pro, and myself were at the Arnold uh, this past year in the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic Expo and Bodybuilding Show. And we had a booth set up for Renaissance Periodization where we would uh, have a barbell and a rack and we would uh, critique your technique. And a ton of people took us up on this and they were all super awesome. While coaching folks, we were prepared to use like 80 trillion cues and corrections that we know from being in this for years and having all these degrees and stuff. But we ended up only using like 10 and then maybe 80 or 90% of the time, we actually only used three. These cues are so effective and the mistakes that lead to them needing to be used are so common and so easily rectified by these cues. I had to make a video to share this with you guys so that you can try this both in your own training if you have problems with squat technique and also in training your own clients because I know a ton of you guys train clients and help other people, maybe even just your parents or your uh, siblings and try to get them to lift weights. And a lot of times, your squat may look great, but then you work with someone else and you look at their technique and you're like, I don't even know where to begin with you. You're doing everything wrong? Do I have to really manually from scratch mind meld with you and show you how to squat? Not quite, because these three tips could hack it. So here we go. Shut up, Mike. Let's get the three tips going. First, almost everyone who starts squatting has not positioned their toes out enough. That means any stance they take Generally, widening the stance by a little seems to work, but that's not even the important thing. You take their toes and you rotate them out much closer to the 45 degree line than you would the 90 degree line or zero degree line. 45 degrees is where you want on average. And for a lot of people that will feel a little strange because that's not typically how you run or how you jump, but it sure as shit is how you squat. In addition to point two, because we have a rule in squatting, your knees generally track with your toes. If you have someone point their toes out, that's rule one. Rule one sub two, still rule one, is make sure that their knees come out. And generally speaking, that means as they descend lower and lower, their knees come out further and further. They're pushing their knees to outside of their body. That aligns the ankles to the knees to the hips. And all of a sudden, it can allow you to get way greater depth without having to come up on your toes or sink back and round your back. And all of a sudden you're like, whoa, it's much easier to squat and I can get through the squatting motion way better. So that's tip number one and it's a huge deal. Squatting without it is kind of a non-starter. Tip number two, especially when coaching someone, not just doing the lift once you've learned it, but in teaching the lift to do it properly, having someone descend slowly and consider a pause at the bottom of their movement is a huge teaching tool. The reason is this, keeping your knees pushed out is something you have to focus on when you're squatting and trying to change your technique for the better. If you drop down fast, a lot of times you just rebound right off your tendons and come back up and fucking who knows what your knees did. But if you go down slow, as you descend, you both get a better feel for where your body is in space and can correct it on the fly, and it gives you time to implement the knees out cue. So as you're descending, you're thinking knees out, knees out, knees out, knees out, knees out. And because you're descending slowly, you can actually implement the cue instead of being like, you go down and come up. Oh fuck, I forgot to put my, push my knees out. And like I said just a second ago, as you descend, you can focus on having your weight spread evenly, uh, evenly, spread evenly on your toes and heels. If you go down really quick, we saw a lot of this happen at the Arnold. People would drop in and drop out. And we we're like, I'm a bit, I'm a bit. I can't even give you any technique cues because you're in and out too fast. And they would usually cut their range of motion by a ton because as soon as they feel that springiness, they come back up. If you go down slow and you pause it wherever you think the bottom is, you're in a really good position. Then whoever's coaching you can say, okay, that looks good. Come back up. You come back up. They say, okay, down slow, knees out, knees out, knees out, knees out. And as you get lower and you think you're going to stop, they go, hey, go, go deeper deeper, deeper, deeper. You're at the very, what you think is bottom. And they're like, okay, pause, hold it. As you hold that pause, your body's awareness mechanisms, proprioception, where your body is in space, recalibrate, recalibrate, recalibrate. Your body is a rapidly learning neural network system. Your brain is anyway, in your spinal cord and peripheral nerves. So as you are in that position, because you didn't get into and out of it really quick, 
you can replicate it better. Every second, every microsecond you spend in the descent and every second you spend at the bottom position, which is the most challenging, is neural learning happening. Your brain is learning, oh, this is where my butt needs to be. This is where my knees need to be. This is where my hips are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you practice slow, which by the way, in every single technique they teach you in every other sport, you practice it slow. You're learning a tennis forehand, first you go slow. Backhand, slow, eventually faster and faster and faster, but if you're practicing good squatting technique and you're just dropping in, slow the fuck down, sit at the bottom. And every time you get lower and lower in the bottom, you sit there for a second or two. It begins as a very uncomfortable alien feeling. After five or six reps, you're like, hey, I'm finding a groove down here. I don't love it down here. Nobody does. But gee whiz, it feels really like it's a place I know. Lastly, tip number three comes in especially at this juncture. Your knees and toes are already in alignment. You're already squatting back and down nice and slowly. At this point, there is a tendency to either come forward on your toes or if you sit back on your heels to round your back and cave over in your chest. You're not trying to sit down in the squat. I can't tell you. Fuck it. Politically incorrect time. It's not so politically incorrect. Fuck it. I'm going to say it anyway. Anytime people send me memes or gifts of babies that are squatting and they're like, hey, look at how natural of a squatter this baby is. They're fucking wrong because the baby never has a fucking elevated chest and their lower back isn't tight. Your baby's rounding its fucking back. That's a shit squat. Oh, great. He's got his heels and his toes on the ground. You could do that too if you fucking rounded your back enough. Now look, I don't think babies should be brought up to a standard of high level squatting. They're just babies. It's adorable when you do anything. You are not a fucking baby, I assume. If you're a baby watching this channel, hello. And your preternatural intelligence is welcomed here. Don't kill us all when you ascend to the next level. In any case, if you're not a baby, you can do one better. As you are opening up your knees, toes pointed out, descending slowly, you're gonna get to a point in your squat where it's harder to descend, everything starts to bind up, and your chest is naturally gonna cave in. This is where you use the cue of chest up. If you are intending to do a low bar squat, if you have, uh, if you are prone to extreme lordosis, very arched sway back at the bottom, and if you want to produce as much force as possible for a one repetition maximum, do not put your chest up. Do the ribs down shit like Chris Duffin says. If you want to do the proper hypertrophy, bodybuilding squat, or even a weightlifting squat, it's the same squat almost, your chest stays up. So as you point your toes out, knees come out, you go down slow, keep your chest up the entire time, especially at the bottom, look forward and or up. And then at some point when you stop, you're going to be real close to hitting full depth. A couple practice runs like that, slow, 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 put a little weight on the bar, slow, 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 maximum depth, knees out, big chest, you're going to be hitting what is almost the perfect squat. It took Jared and I an average of two minutes per person to take their squat from, well, a lot of people had great squats and we were just, get the fuck out of here. You don't need us for anything. Shake your hand, picture, get out. But a lot of folks, just a few people, I guess, had squats that started out like um, dumpster fire, giant disaster. And no offense, when I started squatting, it was the worst in the world. And just with these three cues over like two minutes, we were able to take most people and have them just really squat very competently. So if you're coaching other people, or even if you're coaching yourself, get the toes out, get the knees out, descend slowly, take a pause at the bottom of each position that you think is the lowest, and when the bottom is close, keep your chest up, and I think your squats are going to improve. And if I'm wrong, gee, shit, it wouldn't be the first thousandth time. <laughs> Thought I was going to go on a date with that one girl back in eighth grade. Was I correct? No. Cheryl, if you ever want to call me back, I'm married, bitch. You missed out on this. Your boy's out here. Married up. You can't handle the shit. But I still I think about you now and again. It's weird. It's getting weird. This is getting weird. I'll see you guys next time.